Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a solo overlanding camping trip with a wood stove and a hot tent. So I'm going to get everything out of the truck, get it set up somewhere around here, and then bring you guys up to speed with what's going on and what the plans are going to be. Alright guys, I've got the wood stove totally set up. I've got the pipe out the stove jack. I've got the guy lines on the pipe. Everything is secure and ready to go. Now the temperatures today are 24 degrees Celsius right now in the daytime. Tonight is supposed to go down to 7 degrees Celsius. So that's the reason why I brought these bricks and the wood stove. So for fuel, these are compressed sawdust bricks. You can get these at local hardware stores here in Canada. Canadian Tire carries them. Home Depot, you name it, they're all over the place. So a pack of, I think like 12 of these are four or five bucks. So very, very cheap and they burn for a long time. So I've got two, four, six, seven of these. That is more than enough for this trip. However, I am still gonna have to collect some small sticks to put in there to start the fire to get these burning. But we'll save that for later on. As far as we go right now, the tent is set up. Now I gotta get my sleeping gear set up. All right, guys, I'm just getting some sleeping gear and some camp furniture set up. And I should probably bring you guys up to speed with what's going on because it's going to be a little confusing. So today is actually day two of day three. OK, so this is the second day of three days that I'm camping out. I just made it back to the truck this morning and drove to this location and I'm camping here tonight. So this is merely a pit stop in between overnighter so last night i parked the truck i hiked in and i did a tent overnighter i made it back to the truck this morning and then i drove to this location i'm going to camp here for the night and then tomorrow i'm going to get up drive to another location park the truck and hike in with this backpack which is loaded for night number three normally this night which is essentially a pit stop I normally never film these. I just take this time to kind of recap, get all my gear together, get everything I need, and then start the next day. But I felt this was gonna be really interesting to film this. It's kind of behind the scenes, so this is kind of how I work. I never do one night. I always do multiple nights and then film in between. And then when I get back home, I put it all on my computer, edit it, and put it out to you guys. So this is kind of a sneak peek of what I do in between. So this is night number two. I do have gear all over the truck, so this is completely non-usable right now. It's just full of tents, tarps, all kinds of stuff. But uh, everything that I am using is in the back of the truck. Now, talking about the back of the truck, I have my refrigerator running on my Bluetti battery. That needs to be charged up. So this sunshine, I'm hoping, stays out for a little bit during the day. There are massive spots of clouds rolling in, so I've got to get this done quickly, and then I actually have to get my solar panels out to charge my battery for tonight and tomorrow because I do have food in my refrigerator. I don't want to go bad. So 
I'm gonna be quick with this, toss this in the tent, and then hopefully get those solar panels out, get them set up in the sun to put some juice back in that battery. All right guys, so I've got the solar panels rigged up and I'll just bring you up to speed with what I've got going on here. So I have two separate solar panels. I've wired them in series right now. Each panel is 200 watts. So we have a total of 400 watts collection from the sun. I then got the wire going into my back window to my back seat of the truck, hooked up to the Blue Eddy AC200P, which is a 2000 watt battery unit. So. If I can get an additional 40% of battery life put back in there, I will have absolutely no worries on this trip where I am here today and I've got a full day and night tomorrow. I have to charge headlamps, flashlights, camera gear, run my refrigerator, all kinds of things. So we do have some spotty clouds right now, but there is a lot of blue sky up there. So I'm gonna let this sit here probably for four, maybe five hours, let it do its thing, throw some juice in the battery and we'll check on it a little later on. Okay guys, I'm ducking inside of the tent for a few moments. That sun is actually quite intense outside. So last night was nice and cool. I'm hoping tonight gets just as cool, if not colder. I'm very excited for that. So I've gone and cheated and spoiled myself and brought the whole bag of coffee. So this is some Dark Row 1776 from Blackout Coffee. I've been enjoying this quite a bit. Um, as you guys can see, I've also brought a lot of cooking items. So I do have my titanium French press, which I've been using a lot on the channel. I also brought the mocha pot. So typically I bring this when I bring out wood stoves and this guy makes some excellent, excellent coffee. So hopefully this will be morning coffee on the wood stove. I also brought my large canister because I do have my canister stove with me, which is what we're gonna use right now for coffee in the French press. Um, got my grinder as always and this is kind of my setup. So this is literally behind the scenes on a day where I'm not supposed to be filming and I really don't know how to film this. I don't know, do I just do a typical YouTube video format, run and gun, wham bam, see how you guys like it or do I kick it lone wolf style and do more of a cinematic cut? I think today where I'm actually not supposed to be filming, I'm gonna do more of just a run and gun kind of YouTube video that you typically see on most channels and uh, see how it goes. Maybe you guys enjoy the format, maybe not. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. But uh, for now, I need coffee. And we have some major clouds up top. If you guys notice it's going bright and dark. Lots of clouds out there. The solar panels are still sucking in the sunshine though. My battery is already up 10% more than when it was when I plugged it in. So hopefully I can squeak out 40%. I'll be totally happy with that. So right now it's coffee time. We'll fill up on some of these coffee beans. Get quite a bit in there. Dump them in the grinder and enjoy some fresh ground coffee and maybe even get to sit in the doorway with a nice cool breeze staring out at the lake and enjoy some nice and quiet. So get this ground up and hopefully enjoy a nice beautiful cup of coffee.
All right, so hot cup of coffee hanging out in front of the lake. Beautiful day. The temperatures are starting to come down where we are coming into the fall season. And I'm actually very excited for that. A lot of hot tenting coming up, a lot of different things that are going to be coming to the channel, which are really exciting. So I'm actually really happy to say goodbye to summer. I do not like the summer heat. I don't like the sunny days. I'd much rather a cloudy, kind of dreary, dark, rainy day. Uh, but today is definitely a nice day. So I have to go through all of my gear later on tonight in my backpack just to make sure I've got everything set for tomorrow. This is something that I typically do very often, kind of dump out the backpack. Some of the gear, such as my cup and my titanium French press, I'm going to be using that in tomorrow's video. So. Some of the stuff I'm using today has got to be cleaned up, put it in the bag, and then it'll be put back into the backpack so I can hike in a location tomorrow. So a little bit of work to do. It's not all fun and games, but all in all, I got to say, the view of my office is not that bad. This is definitely nice. So I'm going to enjoy my coffee for a few more moments and then probably make my way inside of the tent, do a little bit of a tidy up, and then continue on with the day. Okay guys, coffee's all done and I'm just kind of straightening up a few things and where this is kind of an impromptu behind the scenes video, I may as well treat it like a behind the scenes video and show you guys some behind the scenes, right? So in this duffel bag, I carry all of my hard goods whenever I'm out truck camping and even in between trips. So for example, I've got a titanium table in here. I've got my alcohol stove. I've got uh, a fire steel, I've got flashlights, headlamps, which I still have to charge and use again tonight. I've got all kinds of goodies in here, some that are going to be used today, some that are going in my backpack to be used tomorrow, and some items are just in case I need them or just in case I want them. They stay in the bag in the truck. So right off the bat, I know that tomorrow I'm going to need my alcohol stove because that is part of my plan for tomorrow. As well as my cup, I'll have to get my cup out of here and go through a few items. But what I want to show you is not only the gigantic mess in the back of the truck. This is totally normal when I'm out and I'm not using the truck. So for example, tomorrow when I tear down the tent, everything is getting thrown in there in a ball. I'm not going to put it back inside of the stuff sack. It won't see the stuff sack for another two days until I get home. So not worried about that. Throw it in, lock it up and be done with it. But one thing I do want to share, which I always get asked, can you do a what's in my pack video? So I'm not going to do that separate video anytime soon because it's a very busy time of the season for me coming up in the fall and winter. I'm, I want to do camping a lot. I don't want to be doing this type of stuff. I want more camping videos. But today, you're lucky because I'm going to show you just a little bit of what's in here. The pack is not totally full. I do have my food in here and some other items. Uh, but like I said, I still have to add my cup, my titanium kettle, and all that stuff that I'm going to be putting in here for tomorrow. But what I do have in here is my sleep system. So I'll show you guys really quick how I pack. First of all, this backpack is from Tactical Innovations. It's a Canadian distributor. I'm not sure if it's still available, but uh, it's an excellent pack, and I really do love it quite a bit. So I'm just going to unsnap all of this, unzip, and the whole front flops down so what i've got rigged up here for tomorrow i'm expecting high winds and rain and wind so we'll see what happens uh obviously we've got the amok so this is the amok shoal 10 tarp i've got the amok hammock up top sideways i've got the amok fuel lw inflatable pad so this is the not the winter but this is our value uh, so negative four degrees Celsius is what they rate it for. So this is a very nice pad. It goes really well with the system. And then I've got a new piece that kind of, again, behind the scenes, I haven't released the video to this. This is the Featherstone Moon Dance Downfill Top Quilt. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to upload this video before this one uploads. But just in case I don't, this video is coming. It's beautiful downfill top quilt. And that's basically my sleep system for tomorrow night. Now, I do have a lot of extra room in the backpack. I'm going to be loading my cooking gear, a little bit more food, and various items. But this is the bulk of the gear, and this backpack just works tremendously well as it is basically a front or top load pack. Everything fits in here really nice, and this is actually what I would bring for a mild winter night. Just this kit right here, and it all fits in there nicely. Still got room for my titanium pot, my cups, 
and all of that stuff. So that is the plan for tomorrow. Later on this evening, I do have to stock this full of everything that I definitely need. And then, uh, and then it'll be off and ready for another night tomorrow night. So that's a little sneak peek behind the scenes. Some more review videos coming up and some other stuff. Uh, let's go check on the battery and see how that's doing. All right, so the battery is actually looking really good. It's been a couple hours with both of these cells collecting a lot of solar energy. I've got my 35, 40% that I was looking for. I could leave them out longer, but I really don't need to. So I'm gonna end up unplugging, packing the solar panels away and get them out of the way. I'll bring you guys in for a close look to see how I've got the back of my truck set up and then we'll get all this stuff cleaned up nicely. All right, so it's gonna be really difficult to show this. The, the lighting and everything's horrible, but this is just a typical video. So if you guys look in the back here, you can see I've got the Blue Eddy AC200P sitting up on the deck. I've got a Tupperware container sitting there full of snacks and goodies and other food. I've got the cables already unplugged. They're just running through the window. So I gotta pass those back through. But one thing with the Ram pickup trucks is the seat folds up. So both of my SPAC seats fold totally up. And then there's this deck piece that folds down. So literally the entire back of my truck could be a sleeping platform if you wanted to sleep on it giving you all kinds of storage room so this battery unit i do have a full review on it like i said is the blue eddy ac 200p it's 2000 watts uh, right now you're seeing the side of it the front is facing towards the front of my truck but this fits in here perfectly and this will run my refrigerator like very very cold i can set it to negative two negative four and it'll run the fridge for a good two three days depending on the ambient temperature now where I'm parked today and the sunlight's beating in the truck, it is keeping the fridge a little bit warm, which is struggling. So it's gonna burn more power, which is why I wanted to put in a little bit more juice into the battery, just in case I run short tomorrow, because I do have food in my fridge that I don't wanna go bad. But this is typically how I run this side of the truck, just one battery unit. I keep a little Tupperware container full of food, a bag of flashlights up here, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. And on the other side, it looks identical, except it's just the refrigerator over there. So coming over to the other side of the truck, this is the passenger side. You guys can see it's basically the same thing. It's much cleaner on this side though. So down here underneath of the deck, I don't have anything stored over there yet. Usually I'd keep like my tow ropes and jumper cables there. They're actually in the back of the camper right now. So that's totally open. And then here I've got the fridge. This is a Calmdo fridge. It's spelled C-A-L-M-D-O. Uh, it's a very nice fridge. It actually works really well. It has an internal basket that I could pull out and bring all the food inside of the house when I get home. So it, I've been using it for about a year now and it works really, really well. I also have the F40C, whatever it's called. I got a review video on that. Uh, so I have two main refrigerators that I use. I like this one in the truck because it's tall. It holds a lot more and it can get down very, very cold and maintain that heat. Now, usually in the summer, or hot weather, I'll throw a down blanket or a wool blanket on top of the fridge just to help insulate it. Today I didn't do that, but I do keep a blanket underneath of all of my stuff on top of the deck just to help keep the truck a little bit cleaner. When I get home, I yank everything out, clean it all off, reset, set it all in there, and then head out again in a couple days. So that's what the other side looks like. Some behind the scenes footage for you guys. Okay, so before I get these solar panels folded up and stored back inside of the truck, there is one more thing that I have to take care of. And that's answer all of the massive amount of questions and emails that I've been receiving about the truck. What did I do to the truck? So there have been three major updates and changes to the truck. One is a four inch suspension lift from Rough Country. I didn't want to go six inches because it just doesn't make any sense for me. The trails I ride, four inch suspension is more than enough clearance. The cost of the kits between a six inch and four inch is exactly the same. So there's no difference other than two inch lift. So I went with the four inch lift kit. I went with 17 inch fuel rims, black and silver. Those are battle ax rims. They're actually pretty nice. They complement the truck with the black and silver very nicely. Personally, I really like them. And for tires, I went with a 35 inch Toyo Open Country mud terrain, 12 and a half inches wide, just because I got a lot of mud, a lot of sand out here. Once we do get snow, I'm most likely gonna to switch to a snow tire. Still gonna stick with the 35, 12 and a half wide. So hopefully that answers the questions to all the people that have been asking me about what did I do to the truck. I wanted to keep it sleek and streamlined 
and I didn't want something that screamed Overland. I want something that's capable, but still looks a little classy. I also installed full underglow lighting, so I have eight rock lights underneath of the truck rigged up to a switch. Those are all tucked away and hidden, so when I am off-road, I can flick the switch and look underneath the truck and see all kinds of clearance. I'm really excited for the snow because I think that's going to add a lot of perimeter lighting around the campsite. I'm also going to be adding ditch lights up on top of the hood and a big 42-inch light bar down in the bumper. Everything tucked in there so it's not in your face too loud. So that's what I did to the truck. Hopefully that answers your questions, guys. I've got to get these solar panels folded up and back into the truck now. All right guys, supper is all done and I gotta say that was definitely awesome. Something really quick and really simple 
just two fajita wraps. So I had some crab meat, some black pepper, parsley, cheese, mayo, put that all together in two wraps. Awesome, no cooking involved. If I do get hungry later on, I've got that container full of snacks and full of other foods that I can cook inside of the tent if I choose to. So right now, I'm just getting all my lighting stuff ready. So I do have a battery bank here. I've got some flashlights, headlamps. I've got my little hanging light bulb, which I like hanging inside of the tent, which is what the battery bank is for. And I'm just gonna get all this stuff situated inside. I've already got my sleep clothing and some food already situated in there. Um, and that's basically gonna be it for gear tonight. Then I'll be able to put this all inside and lock it away. One thing I do wanna point out, just, just caught my eye out of the corner there. Uh, this is not full of coffee. So this is something that I do very often when I'm out with a truck. In fact, even when I'm out hiking, just like today, last night I hiked in, camped, today I drove here. This is in my truck. So when I get back to my truck, I empty out all the garbage out of my backpack. So you often see me putting ramen noodle packages or whatever in my pocket. They all go inside of this. So this is full of garbage. Uh, there's a can in there. There's all kinds of stuff in there. So this is what I like to do for my truck. I just pop it in the back of the truck. This way it keeps mice, uh, bugs, insects, all kinds of things out of the truck because it's in this closed container. That way I've got all the garbage and I can take it home, dump it in the garbage can, and I'm not littering out here or throwing anything inside of the fire pit. So that's the deal with that. It is not full of coffee. It is actually full of trash. Um, but that's pretty much it. I want to get all my lighting inside of the tent and I think it's going to be almost sunset time. All right, so I've got my light bulb hung inside of the tent with my battery bank, and I've also brought my little table. I totally forgot I had this until I looked in the bag, and there it is. This is gonna be perfect for sitting on the edge of the lake watching the sunset. So I'm just gonna get this prepped and ready to go. One thing I do wanna mention is two flashlights. So I don't talk about flashlights often on the channel because the only time that I use them is at nighttime, and generally I'm using them as a tool rather than uh, a piece of gear that you can really see because I need to put it behind the camera to shine light. So these are two really great products. However, I don't review them because both companies are really, really pushy and very annoying. Um, and whenever I get pushed, I push back and I just say no. So I'll let you guys know, little tidbit here, just because we're behind the scenes. This is an Olight product. This goes with me every single camping trip it has a magnet on it. I mean, I can literally stick it to my truck. I often stick it to the side of my knife, to be honest. If I put the knife in the ground or even in a, a stump, I can stick it to the side. And now we got a filming light because I don't have any camera lights. I only use headlamps and flashlights when I'm filming at nighttime. So this is the Olight Perrin 2. I'm not gonna review this because like I said, the company pushes too hard and it's really annoying and I don't like to be pushed. So that's the Perrin 2, just to let you guys know. And then this is a product from Through Night. This is also another company that pushes way too hard and is super annoying. However, it is a really good product. This is my go-to headlamp. This is the BSSH01. It's a OD green camo strap. It's also magnetic, making it a very versatile light. These are both 90 degree angle lights, meaning they shine the light beam that way, not this way like a typical flashlight. And that's probably why I use them the most is because I can put it down like that, turn it on, shine the light, or like I said, stick it to something magnetic. This is with me every trip and this is with me every trip. So hopefully that answers you guys' questions as to what flashlights do I bring the most. I have probably 50 tactical high-end flashlights in my collection, but like I said, the only time that you guys see them is, well, you don't. You see the light beam, but you don't actually see the light. So. This probably won't happen again anytime soon, but uh, like I said, two great lights, two very annoying companies.
right guys, sunset is just about here. The sun over there is kind of dipping below the trees. The temperature has come down quite a bit too, so you'll notice I got my sweater on. There is a cool breeze swooping through here. I think tonight's going to be actually quite relaxing just chilling out here. Across the lake we've got some beautiful fall colors starting to roll in. So we've got a lot of red leaves starting to pop, which is awesome. I'm really excited for that. I can even see a little bit of orange and a tiny bit of yellow. So I think within the next week or maybe even two to three weeks, this entire area is just going to be gold and orange and yellow, which will be awesome. I'm excited for cold weather camping, guys. So I'm going to be chilling out right here for probably, I don't know, a couple hours. I want, to, I want to sit right here and watch the sunset is what I want to do. Um, I do have a beer with me and it's cold. So that is a, uh, a behind the scenes kind of thing. So I got two in the fridge. I think I might end up drinking both tonight because I actually got very spotty cell phone service and I can see that tomorrow I'm going out hammock camping and it's supposed to thunder and lightning. I don't think I want to be carrying the extra weight being totally soaked. So. These are 0% alcohol, by the way, so 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, I think I might drink both tonight. I'm not totally sure, but they are cold because they just came out of the refrigerator, so that's something different. Usually I end up drinking them warm because they've been in my backpack all day or put them in a stream or lake, but they're never really cold, not like it is right now. So I'm going to enjoy that in a few moments, but I think this is going to be a very nice evening with the cold air total blue sky with big pockets of clouds so i think once the sun gets low those clouds are going to come to life with color you got the birds in the background chirping away so i think this is the end of summer guys i think we're going to be rolling into colder temperatures with the coming weeks and i'm very excited Okay, so it's been about an hour and the sun is still setting, but it's getting very, very close to that last light and it's looking really good across the lake. But right now I'm going to get this fire going and I'm going to get it damped down very, very low. That way I don't have to fiddle around with it later on in the dark. I just want to point out a few things. So I had to collect a few twigs and branches just from around here, around in the dirt area, because these bricks will not burn by themselves. You have to have an established fire built in order to get one of these going. But once these are going, you can just load another one in, one after another, and it'll keep uh, it'll keep burning. So I'm gonna be lighting the fire with some DIY wax pads. These are little makeup pads that I just dip in candle wax at home. Super easy to make, just kind of tear them. You can light them with a fire steel or matches. Today I've got some matches out of the truck, so I might as well just toss a couple in there. I'm gonna get this going now. Like I said, I'm gonna damp it down very, very low once it's burning. That way when I do come in here, all I gotta do is shut the tent door, load in another brick, open the draft, and I should be good all night. So let's get this going and see how it takes off. All right, so the stove is going pretty good right now. What I'm gonna do is break this brick in half. I think I could probably do it with my knife because it's already kind of swollen from water. So let's try and break this in half. All right, so I got a fairly large chunk off of it. I'm gonna place it inside just to kind of kickstart this to burn. 
I don't think we'll have to actually. I think it's burning really good right now. Let's just toss the whole thing in there. All right, so it is ready to go. Once that brick really catches, I'm gonna damp the stove down and let it smolder away for a little while. And hopefully that'll still be in there by the time it is to uh, come in later on this evening. And then I'll load my first evening brick in there. And hopefully I'll have a few left over for tomorrow because if I don't have to use them all, I'd like to save a couple, but all in all, they're fairly cheap and readily available. All right guys, sunset is done. It has totally gone down. There was no color at all. It seems whenever you want the clouds to be there, they're never there. And whenever you want them to be gone, they're there. So tonight there's totally no clouds in the sky, no reflection, no color. But this stove is rocking away right now. It just broke up that brick. It opened up, caught fire. So that's going really well. And I gotta say, it's definitely warm inside of here. So. I think I'm going to leave this door open for quite a while, but I am going to basically come inside. I do have movies saved on my phone as always, so I am going to be enjoying a movie tonight. I've got my table set up over here, so I'll be able to prop that up and actually sit down and have a nice area to kind of lounge in. And I also brought some Snickerdoodle hot chocolate, so I'm actually going to mix this up right now. I'll probably get the kettle on there, get a little bit of water in it mix up this hot chocolate and probably sit right here and watch the last little bit of light fade outdoors before shutting the door. Well, Snickerdoodle hot chocolate is definitely a big thumbs up. That tastes awesome. So it is very, very hot though. So we'll let that cool down for a little bit. I think I'm just gonna give it a little more of a stir, break some of that up. So the whole tent smells like Snickerdoodle right now. And it actually smells really, really good. And it reminds me a lot of Christmas time. So that is pretty awesome. I'm gonna enjoy that once it cools down a little bit. But this is basically gonna be it for the rest of the evening. I'm gonna be lounging inside. I do have a very early morning tomorrow because I am going camping again. And I'm actually expecting thunderstorms and rain by the looks of the, the weather network. So it's going to be a very uh, interesting day. So if we do wake up here with rain and whatnot, which I don't think we will because it's supposed to be raining later on in the day, um, I do have a fairly long drive to make and then I gotta park the truck and hike into my location from there. So probably about an hour and a half away from here. Uh, so that'll give me plenty of time to get all this cooled down, the tent taken down, everything packed away, and probably just leisurely head out of here.
make it to my kind of parking location and then set up uh, all my gear from there, my backpack, get everything loaded, and then hike into my camping location. So I do have to get to bed early tonight, which is why I'm gonna be starting my movies right now inside. I wanna get out of these pants, get into my comfy base layers that I have inside of the mesh inner, and I'm just gonna kick back and lounge right here. So I'll catch you guys first thing in the morning for a cup of coffee, hopefully made right here on the stove. And then we'll uh, we'll take a peek outside and see what the sunrise looks like. Good night, guys. See you in the morning.
Good morning guys. It's a beautiful morning out here on the edge of the lake. We got some birds chirping. Looking out the door I can barely see the tops of the pine trees across the lake now because the fog is really starting to set in. Just these kind of towering pine tree tips just poking up out of the fog. It looks awesome. So let me explain last night. I did not end up sitting in the chair. I actually ended up going inside and laying down because the heat up here was a little too warm. But laying down away from the stove, it was actually very, very nice. And the glow inside of this tent was amazing. Coming out of that side window was really nice. Now the front window did blacken up just the way I was loading it and feeding it. These bricks often do spit a little bit of black smoke. It's not, the, um, there's no chemicals in the bricks. It's just the way it burns. It burns rather fast and dry. And it likes to do that, but when you damp the stove really, really down low, they smoke a lot. So the front glass is smoked up. The side glass is totally fine. Uh, that's just because I was running it really low. Now in the winter time, that won't happen because of course you'll be opening the draft, burning it hot because it'll actually be cold out. So that's the downside with running a stove too low is uh, the front kind of blackens. The side stays fine because the fire goes towards the back, but. That is one thing I did notice last night. Um, so bring guys up to speed this morning. I've got coffee on the go. I use my mocha pot, which is awesome. The coffee is super strong today. I've got two packs of cinnamon and uh, apple oatmeal in here, and it looks like it's ready right now. And I also brought a bagel and a bottle of honey. So I've got a plain bagel here. I'm gonna be taking that and uh, putting it in my titanium pan. I want to get that on top of the stove and toast it up. And when it's toasted, I got a bottle of liquid honey, which is going to be awesome. So that's going to be breakfast right now. I might as well get that bagel on there. And this is actually something I do very often is bagel on a wood stove. If you guys are uh, regular viewers to the channel, you'll, you'll probably see this a lot in the wintertime and in the fall. I'll bring bagels and it's just for some reason I just love them. This is a cinnamon raisin bagel actually. I'm not sure if I said plain or not. I have plain bagels in the truck. This is a cinnamon raisin bagel. So we'll get this on there. Get that nice and toasted up. Put the other one on the other side. Get it warm and enjoy some breakfast here in the tent. All right, this bagel is toasted perfectly. Perfectly, got some honey on there. Let's give it a go. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It never disappoints. Never. Oh, it's good. Mm. That is probably one of my favorite foods to cook on the wood stove. Simply a toasted bagel. It's super fast, easy, works really well. And this one's almost done. Keep the stove burning nice and low. Works really well. So I'm going to enjoy the rest of my breakfast. And I'll catch up with you guys as soon as I'm finished. All right, guys, I think the rain is coming right now. Looking behind the camera, the sun is totally gone, and there is a massive wall of just solid gray coming this way. So fingers crossed, hopefully I get a massive rainstorm today for tonight's video. Um, the stove has cooled down. Ow! The stove has cooled down enough that um, I can get the pipes in there. So I'm just going to start loading them in. And that took quite a while, I will say. That's probably the biggest downfall for me with using stainless steel stoves is the cool down period. Now if you're out at a cabin or even if I was here just in the winter time and I had time to kind of waste just sitting in the truck doing whatever, 
it's not a big deal, but for me, I want to move fast. So that's the reason why I really love titanium. Also, I hike a lot. So hiking in with this is not going to happen. Hiking in with titanium is obviously easier. Um, so get that all packed away. And I can feel, I can almost feel the cold in the air right now as soon as those clouds came over. Wow. Also got some airplanes in the sky flying over, so I think it's going to be a noisy day in this area. But uh, either way, this is going to get packed away and I'm basically ready to hit the road and get out of here. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching. I know this is a, kind of a strange video, it's behind the scenes and uh, I figured why not do it, bring you guys along for the ride, answer some questions, show you guys some things that I normally don't show. and. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So this was the first hot tent night of this season. I'm hoping we get some really cold temperatures soon and we get to do this a lot more often. But uh, until then, I'm gonna pack this up, get it in the back of the truck, and I'm going camping. So I've got to drive to another location, hike in, and start filming all over again. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments section. I'll be sure to get back to you. Peace out, guys. See you in an hour. <laughs> See you guys in the next video. Bye.